Football is how I'm in Australia, essentially. It's been such an important part of my life from the first day to today. On for Mitchell again. Cole's breaking clear. There it is. Gary Cole's second. There's been a lot of talk in recent times about falling in love with the game and, and watching my dad play with his brother, Harry, um, they played for a Charterhouse Boys Club. So I, I grew up being dragged sort of all around London. And they played on open fields, they used to have to get the posts from behind the shed and set the posts up in the nets before they played. So I watched them play and I watched them party afterwards listening to Tamla Motown and, and, and all of those great songs. So that, that's where the love came from. But Dad was a central defender um, and never had any interest to play in the back. I love sticking the ball in the onion bag up, up the other end, but he, he's responsible for my love. But no, I've got him covered in terms of who was the better player. Dad, in the days when uh, the fur trade was politically correct, he was a skin flesher. So he worked on a circular razor blade called a banjo and took um, pelts across skins. Anyway, that's what he did in London. One of his mates threw him a local paper one day which said skin fleshers wanted Australia and New Zealand. This was late towards the end of 1970. Went for an interview, unbeknownst to the family, and then sort of came back and said, so who wants to go to Australia? And we said, where the is Australia. <laughs> in January uh, 1971, he took off and, and the family came three weeks behind him in February. I left London on my 15th birthday, so we came to Australia and I just, I just didn't like it because it wasn't London for a long time. But I fell in love with Australian football. Back in those days, of course, people all read the, the local newspaper. There was an ad, soccer players wanted South Yarra Soccer Club. So I rang up the president at the time, answered the phone, and I said, this is, you know, Gary Cole just arrived from the UK, have you got any junior teams? And he said, um, how big are you? And I said, 6'1". And he said, don't worry about the junior teams, just come down to training. <laughs> so we did, we went down to Faulkner Park, we trained under the street lights. Dad just loved it as well, and then we both ended up joining and we played in the reserves together at South Yarrow. So playing with my dad's a pretty special memory. They were wonderful times. That was Blair's shot. The ball's loose, the ball's in the net. A goal scorer's job is to put the ball about the net and he did it. He made it very difficult for the defence. He'd pressure, he'd, I mean he was just a, he was busy all the time and he seemed to love it. Because all you had to do for Gary was knock it forward past the defender and Gary was like lightning then those days and uh, he was on the end of it and he would have, only have the goalkeeper to beat. Gary was so quick, so elusive. Once, once he get past you, you know, you, you never catch him. Being a striker is you, you've got to understand what that means technically, uh, and, and you've got to become a good finisher. You know, I was a sprinter by nature. I wasn't blessed with technical skills. Um, I was six foot one. I wasn't the greatest in the air, although I was competent. I was really, really quick, and I learned to master the art of that. But as a sprinter, invariably, I was running onto a ball and in the early days I would just smash it as hard as I could. That used to kill koalas and seagulls in the trees. We lost countless balls in the swimming pool uh, behind Ring with Silly Winner Manor. But I got to understand that there's battle tempo and there's cruise control. And when it comes to finishing, you're better at cruise control than battle tempo. Sometimes you can't help it. So I got better technically at, at the craft. And I have to say that people like Jimmy Rooney and Jimmy Campbell, J J Jimmy Tansy, uh, uh, Jamie Payton, John Eisendorn, Theo Selamides, the fact that a whole bunch of those people were playing with the state team and the club team uh, and the Socceroos meant that we had a good understanding and there was, we could play together. I certainly benefited from what they created. Well, I suppose my first memories of Gary were fairly clear in the, the sense where he, he was a very, a very imposing individual. He'd been at the club, I think, probably about a year he came from Ringwood, a year before that. He kind of grew up as what I did, you know, him in England, myself in Scotland. This is what our life was, was, was football. You know, I mean, obviously we, we came here and we had to, we had to we could adjust to the, the soccer. As time progressed, you know, the team, team gelled and obviously we did, we did get a bit of success, so, which was great. John Margaritz was coach at the time and I got transferred from Marconi down to here and then Gary was here and uh, just a good centre forward. 
he can make bad passes look really good, you know. <laughs> Just put it up there and behind the defences and he was there and he was powerful and he, he got there and <clears throat> scored a lot of goals. Well liked at Heidelberg and, uh, you know, and when he went into the national team and the Victorian team, he, same thing, he was well liked, well respected and uh, did a job wherever he, wherever he was. Campbell again! He was so welcoming to me when I came to Australia and uh, we got on really well and we had a good sense of humour. He was like the, the striker that everybody talked about. And one of the reasons why Gary Cole is rated as our top striker in Australia, going to play uh, a big role in Australia's immediate soccer future. The Victorian state team played occasionally interstate but we we had a road trip to Numea, of all places, which was fantastic. Uh, John Dimpsis in the Victorian Soccer Federation. John was a, a great administrator, and I'm going to say he had a great eye for talent as well, because <laughs> the way he tells the story on the flight back from Numea, I sidled up to him and said, Mr Dimpsis, can you get me to, to Fitzroy United? Now, I have no recollection of that, but he did that, and they eventually negotiated a transfer release. And I got to play it with Fitzroy United Alexander in the last season of the State League before the National Soccer League kicked off in 1977, the following year, with some wonderful footballers and human beings. It was a little bit surreal because obviously there was a whole bunch of those Heidelberg fans or Fitzroy fans walking into the stadium. The stadium was awash in blue and white, of course, um, because in those days there was no memorabilia. So the only green and gold that existed was if someone's grandma had knitted them a green and gold scarf, essentially. We were booed onto the pitch, but in the most friendliest, warmest way you could ever be booed. It, it, it was like, we're Greek fans, we've got to support Greece, but we love you because you're a, you're a Heidelberg boy. That essentially was it. Down the middle, he's going to try this himself. He's got a score. Oh, a fine goal. Gary Cole, 1-0 Australia. Every time I replay that goal in my mind, it gets a couple of metres further and further out. Gary Cole slotting in a 1-0 lead. To be wearing the green and gold and have the national anthem play, the hairs on the back of my neck are sticking up right now, just thinking about that. It, it was just an incredible honour and not something that I ever dreamed, you know, would, would have been a possibility for a, a young kid leaving London and, and coming to Australia. The South Melbourne Derby is always a great highlight. The atmosphere was just electric, you know, and you could almost guarantee that the games at Middle Park or Olympic Park or Olympic Village um, would be just be sold out, which would have been around about 27,000 people. The games were always high tempo. <laughs> they were uh, a tad aggressive with all that talent. The John Eisenthorn, Jimmy Tansy, Jimmy Rooney, Kenny Taylor, uh, Jamie Payton, my striking partner. It's almost like it was more important than winning the league to the fans just to have bragging rights. I don't know whether we had this sort of little brother mentality, but we went through a period of time where we, we played them and we, we seemed to win um, and I seemed to score. Uh, and people, including me, loved that. <laughs> If I had to pick one favourite memory, it would be the 1980 grand final win over Sydney. Uh, it was the first outside broadcast of SBS. I think Johnny Warren and, and Les Murray were, were broadcasting. We had the Prime Minister at the game and we beat them 4-0 and I scored a hat-trick. Out to Bazikas. With him is Cole and here's Cole now. Marvellous, marvellous goal by Heidelberg United. And that really will stand up as the best goal of the match so far of Gary Cole. 1980 grand final, he was superb. And thankfully he was on our side. <laughs> he scored a hat-trick and, you know, I'll never forget that. It's a very fierce game. Sydney City were obviously the team to beat. You know, we, we were probably the underdogs against the team which were probably regarded as the best team over that kind of period. We had such a resilience and such a great, you know, I suppose camaraderie off the park, which obviously can meant on the park. You know, Gary's three goals were obviously outstanding. That was a, the first time we'd won a trophy together because we'd been in a number of finals. We seemed to crumble in the finals for some reason or other. And this one we won and uh, it was just phenomenal goal scorer. And the man number 15 in your picture is Kenny Taylor. I came on for Jimmy Rooney for about five minutes. And I've, I say this to Jamie every time I see Jamie Payton. I think if you watch the footage of the game, if you just left that, ball instead of knocking it in the, in the goals up, I would have scored. And there's number four. There's number four, Jamie Payton for Heidelberg United.
Personally, that was a, a really, really good day at the office because, to be fair, you know, we'd finished as silver medalists or bridesmaids to Sydney so many times. So to win, it meant so much. You know, there were, there were hundreds of fans travelled up back in the days when it was bloody expensive to fly around Australia. The fans were just, they were just in, in top form. You come back into this club uh, any time and there's still those fans around that, that still want to talk about that game and how good it was and how good the players were. It was just a very special time, but for me a special club. There was that bond and it makes a lot of difference. It brings about success. A lot of the boys at Heidelberg are still good friends, you know, Kenny Taylor, Jimmy Campbell, Theo Salamides and we had a reunion about a month ago for over the winning that title there, you know, so camaraderie is a great thing in football. <laughs> we trained together, we played together and we socialised together. I didn't have any family here, so the club was the family and I've said this numerous times on different interviews, you know, Heidelberg or Fitzroy Alexander was the, was the family club. After games, whether it be home games, you know, we'd end up going back to somebody's house for a, you know, a party or whatever it may be, or a sing song. I think it was the key to the success. I got approached by Preston through Peter Ollerton, who was another friend that was coaching there and they'd had a successful season. But I had a phone call out of, out of the blue from Pierre Pallas, who was the president, I think, at South Melbourne at the time. Um, was obviously a very wealthy man because he came to take me out for coffee in a, um, in a Lamborghini or something with gold wings. I actually thought that was going to be my signing on fee, but it turned out that wasn't the case, unfortunately. And at the end of it, I chose to go, really, because Ollie was a friend. But yeah, it was... <laughs> wasn't great for, a, for a, uh, a player to leave Heidelberg and go to Preston at the time. Bit of argy-bargy off the terraces, I think, when the, the first time we played one of them. Scored by that man, Gary Cole, a wonderful strike of the ball in the 13th minute of play. With it rolled across, I hit it from outside the box with the outside of my right foot and it beat Gary Meyer at the far post, um, which is what Andrew Naboo's done a couple of times since then. The most amazing thing in that, when Andrew Naboo did it the first time, John Cosmina was doing the commentary on Fox Sports and he said, that's just like the goal Coley scored against Preston. And I was like, how the bloody hell does he remember that? Took advantage of that, Preston. The marvellous finishing skills of Gary Cole were really seen for all... I was a school teacher for 10 years, so the move into coaching was always going to happen. Eric Worthington, who set up the Rothmans coaching scheme, the national uh, coaching scheme here in Australia, he had the capacity to change your behaviour on a football pitch at training, which changed your and the team's behaviour in a game to improve the performance. I thought he was a witch doctor, because I'd never come across anything like that. And I learned that's what coaching was at, at the time. So to go to work at the AIS and be a full-time coach, my technique improved. My ability to cross a ball improved. My understanding of playing as a striker improved. I got to see what the best players in the world were doing on a daily basis and then take all of that. And we got to work with some of Australia's best talent, which was just unbelievable. Even when he coached, I think he was a, that's what he was. He was a leader. He could coach and teach players what to do on the park. And with what he learned at the Institute of Sport and, and where he came from, he put into practice when he took on the coaching positions. I, would, I just wish I'd have been his assistant. But if you actually look at, look at Gary's uh, career in, in totality, you've got a situation where, as a player, he, he couldn't have done any more. He's played for Australia a number of times. He's obviously been a, a coach. He's been an administrator. So we've got experience in all different aspects of the game. Ian Dobson had, had won a championship at Altona Magic and um, had gone on to Melbourne Knights. Dobbo and I were good friends. We played together at Preston. Um, we both lived out in Croydon. It was a, a six stubby trip from on a Thursday night on the way back from Preston to, to Croydon. Dobbo is arguably Victoria's most successful coach. He's won so many championships with you know, Green Gully and he, he won the title with Melbourne Croatia as well. Dobbo said, look, I've got this opportunity. I've mentioned you to Altona. They'd love to have a chat. So went in, uh, the fact that I inherited a, a very experienced squad and we, we added to that. Uh, and we won that, the championship, you know, that, that year, um, albeit on penalties against Heidelberg. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which is a little bit surreal, but they were great times and it was nice to win that first championship as a coach. 
I recently went through some health issues and Zoran Petrescu, Danny Madaroski is now coaching in, in the USA, but they came and got me, took me out for a cup of coffee and just spoke about those days, how great it was to work together and how they're in their coaching journeys using some of the stuff that we did and spoke about. And that's the rewarding thing. You want to be successful. That's how you essentially get measured um, in the high performance field. You know, do you win or do you lose? But at the end of the day, you're developing people, you're developing human beings. You look at the, the small impact that, that you might have made. We've got this game comes into our lives for a period of time and if, if we can leave it a little bit better than we found it, then we've done a good job. How often does someone say, hey listen, we want you to come and help us build a brand new club from the ground up that's going to play in a new brand new elite competition here in Australia. To be asked to help build Melbourne Victory from the ground up was a, an incredible honour. Very, very proud of what we did because I think we helped becoming one of the benchmark clubs uh, in the A-League and, and here in Australia. One of the things that Ernie and I spoke about early on and with Jeff Law was the fact we should get as many Victorians in to the team as possible to help build that and hey, if all else failed, we'd at least get their families to come to the games. You know, Kevin Musker, Archie Thompson, Danny Alsop, Andy Vlahos, Christian Sarkis, Adrian Leyer. So many of that first group were all Victorian. The best thing about season one was the Sydney FC came to town. Olympic Park was sold out an hour and a half before kickoff. We won 5 0. Archie scored a goal where he beat six people in their six yard box. Richard Kitzbickler scored. The number of people told me that the A-League had no chance, they didn't have a hope in hell of working. Um, I rang a few of those those days and said, hey listen, have a listen to this. <laughs> that brought a great deal of joy, but the atmosphere was just free and electric. There were people that had never been to a game of football in their life, were coming into that environment and they were watching the crowd as much as they were watching the game. They were leaving with a scarf, a cap and a membership and going, hey, you've got to get on board, this bloody football thing's going on. Not everybody gets this accolade. Hall of Fame is, is, a, is a great achievement for Gary and I think you'll be very, very proud. I think Gary would be very proud. It's well deserved. He's, he's put in the hard yards in football and still putting in. I think it's thoroughly deserved and I, I couldn't think of anyone better to have him into that honour. For him personally, for his family, it's just such a great honour for him, so I'm really, really pleased for him. Kyle, there's his hat trick. I was inducted into the Soccer Australia Hall of Fame a, a long, long time ago. That happened here in Victoria, so when I was initially contacted, I was like, I think, that, I think I've, that's already happened. It really is nice to be honoured, but it helps, it helps me reflect on the journey that I've had in football, how lucky I've been through that process, how friggin' hard I've worked through that process, but how blessed I am to have the players and the coaches, the administrators, the referees, and the fans that I've got to know on the journey and realise that this is a love story because there's this bloody crazy game that drives us all mad and nuts, but it just gives us so much back. So yeah, I'm, I'm blessed. Looking to hit straight back!